So today I'm going to discuss uh, some features of the terrain tool that are not uh, immediately obvious. And then I'm um, also going to bring up the masking tool as kind of a request of how to do some revealing. So I'll bring it up into three points. First up is going to be using the terrain line of sight feature to create a hex grid. So the initial process is a little, a little tedious. So not difficult, but very tedious where what we're going to do is line up the hexes onto the map itself. Now, if you do this, I would suggest you then save it as a module and then you can bring in any hex maps and just shift them over. You can layer the maps on top of each other. Uh, and the reason we want to do this, uh, is so that you can limit player vision over certain areas. So if we're going to do this hex crawl, initially you can set it up just by clicking into the hex lines themselves. The, they will sync up to patterns that are already presented. Uh, so that's, it'll make it easier over time as you do these. Now, if you've got very large hex crawls, the initial setup of this map will take some time, but this is why I tell you, you should make sure that when you set this up, you should save this and just layer any hex maps over the top of it uh, so that you don't have to sit here and do the terrain feature every single time. Now, I've already got one of these set up so that you don't have to sit here and watch me do this. Um, but if I have this set up, one of the things we'll do is show you how this interacts with the player. So I'm gonna grab a player and drop them onto the field. Now, I like making their tokens just a little bit smaller. You can set this by default in the configurations tab if you want, uh, but making them a little smaller just means they kind of hover in the, in the, in the hex. So if we bring up our player, uh, then what we're going to do is see their perspective. So from here, uh, since the token lock is off, uh, I'll be able to move the token around. However, um, so she only sees the immediate area around her. And if I move, then the area that they previously went to grays out. So if you're in a hex map where there's going to be multiple people moving around, you may even lose track of where the other individuals are and only see the places that you discover as you travel along. So this is useful to allow the players to gain an increased vision of the map over time, but at the same time, not just instantly revealing to them locations or places they need to be. Uh, your villagers can even suggest, you know, uh, head west, head north, right? And the players can do a little bit of searching uh, in a, in a non-trivial way. So the next way we're going to talk about using the terrain feature is through separating regions on a map. It'll help your players not discover an entire continent in a single period. But uh, let's say we have a large area over here. We can divide the terrain feature out by the different perspectives here and even create kind of more claustrophobic feels in areas where they shouldn't be able to see quite as far. Uh, so if we create like a, a mountain section here, what you want to do is divide down the center uh, and then line up to where the potential foot, 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 foothills will be, right? And by doing this, we're going to create a large region Uh, so in this avenue, a player in the center will see everything in the center and not past the mountains. So if you have mountain chains blocking the very middle uh, of a map or perhaps preventing sight from a uh, different coast of water or something, you might, that'll block off the vision. They won't just instantly see everything beyond it. So this keeps them from seeing over the mountains at the moment. If you put one on the backside uh, of the same mountains, uh, then what this will do is it'll lock their vision into just... Uh, it'll lock their vision into just the side of the mountains that they're on. So even as they cross the mountains, they won't be able to see back over, right? So uh, that'll keep them from like peering around the mountains. Now, the claustrophobic feel, the way that you can use this to make their vision limited and make them realize their vision is limited is by setting up small clusters and areas. So something like a forest here, I'm just going to set up a, a small grid pattern and we'll just say they're going to start in like this city of a Aleth here, uh, because I have that city here, and then what we can do is we can sync up these boxes and make this area more contained. So they won't instantly be able to go and see everything around them. 
again, they will snap to each other. Uh, if they don't, you can just drag and drop the things here, all the beacons, whatever you want to call them. Oh, I'm double clicking. Double clicking ends the current grab. So uh, maybe I'll potentially mess one of these up on purpose and then show you to, how to snap it in. So we'll do like here. And then if you have things that aren't aligned, just go to the grab tool. You can straight, you know, like grab multiple points, right? So if we had like two or three points out here, we could grab and bring them all into the same point and it'll lock them up uh, in case you're just really not good at uh, fine point mousing. Uh, okay, so now that we've set up some of these some of these areas, what we're going to do is turn on the line of sight again. And now when we go back over to, I need to drop her on. So now that, that we do this, I'll put one of the players in a All right. And, uh, we'll see her vision is immediately locked to just in the forest areas. And when she moves out, she won't immediately peer past the mountains either. Now, if we were going to have her move out of the forest, then her vision widens, right? Now, you can use this to block off different regions. I would set up a map a little bit differently than this if that was the intention of the map. Um, but this way, you can limit their vision across the fields of just like a region uh, and let them explore the region through a little more natural feel than just being able to see everywhere. I love maps, though, so I like to share maps. So the last thing I wanted to talk about is the masking tool. And uh, for something like this, you can reveal the terrain over time through use of the masking tool in Fantasy Grounds. I'll show you an incarnate how to do what I'm doing where you paint reveal. Uh, it's something that Mati has done, but like I can show it to you. So the first thing you do if you're gonna use the masking tool in Fantasy Grounds is enable the mask. Now you'll immediately then reveal the entire player sheet and this is going to make the player sheet look exactly like it did previously. So if we go to the player side, you'll see that the player can see the entire sheet, right? Like this is the purpose of the player sheet. So we haven't done anything spectacular yet. Now what you'll know is uh, if we take this and then we then go and hide just the mast region so we can just hide the map. Uh, we can then go and reveal sections of it that we that we want. All right. Now you can just drag and drop to uh, create perfect squares, um, but you can also in here hold the Alt key. And in holding the Alt key, it'll allow you to carve out something that's not just a square, right? And then we can carve out the regions that we want to reveal to them. And this can all just be done straight through Fantasy Grounds. So as you go, the players will get revealed more sections of the map and the pins and things can exist through uh, your your mask so uh, you won't have to worry about like if you want you can drop a pin somewhere and they'll know they're going that direction even though they can't necessarily see where the terrain is this has been the terrain and masking and uh, i hope you enjoyed the video